Can we celebrate Jesus? We want to thank our daddy for this opportunity to be here this morning and yesterday. Thanks for the hospitality. Thanks for your love. God bless you richly and all the pastorate. God bless you richly in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, the keyboard is, can you put this on strings? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The same I've touched your grace, my life has changed. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace, my life has changed. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace, my life has changed. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We bless your name for such a time in your presence. We thank you for the transformation that you will do. We thank you, Lord, for the heart that will be renewed. We thank you for the testimonies that is attached to this meeting. We give you all the glory. We exalt your name. Thank you for the privilege to be in your presence this morning. We we'll bless your name. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So we had a beautiful time yesterday, and um, we are going to continue today with marriage and relationship meets. Meets. Marriage and relationship meets. Hallelujah. Amen. Hosea chapter 4, Over verse 6a. Six. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 a. a. Message Bible. Can, no, don't go. Just, um, stay. Um, just do it as. I'll tell you when I need the strings. All right. Thank you. Hallelujah. Mm. Hosea chapter 4, 4 verse, verse 6 a. a. The message translation. Message translation. Good. Verse 6. Verse 6. Message translation verse 6. Okay, don't let me just read from here. A. It says, my people are ruined because they don't know what is right or oh. true. My people are ruined because they don't know what is right or true. Um, King James says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Yes. So, Hosea 4 verse 6. A says, my people are ruined because they don't know what is right or true. So, we're teaching on marriage and relationship meets. So myths are things that you believe, things that, that are not true, or they look like it's true, but they're actually not true. You know, generally, you know, people have accepted it as their way of life. People have accepted those kind of thoughts. People have accepted that kind of mindset. Doesn't actually mean that it's true. So, and that's what scripture is telling us this morning, that people are ruined. A lot of people have gotten into wrong relationships or do wrong things. A lot of people have gotten into wrong marriages or do wrong or handle ma their marriage in a wrong way because they do not know what is right or true. You know, you see things happening on social media, you go on Instagram, you go on Facebook, you go on Twitter, and you see different things happening, and you're like, oh, this is the way, you know. You know, sometimes what is popular, tr popularly true becomes the truth to some people. What is commonly true becomes the truth, and people are generate, I mean, let me not use our generation. Anyways, a lot of people do not go through scriptures to really check you know, screen through what is actually the right knowledge. So when scripture says, my people perish for lack of knowledge, there are knowledge everywhere, but there is good knowledge. There is the right knowledge. So what is commonly true may not be true because I've realized that the things that come out of scriptures are the things that are really lived. Yeah. The things that come out of scripture, that, that should be scriptural, we should be scripturally inclined, we should live by scriptures, but many of the times they are really lived. So many persons love to go with the crowd, and what the crowd lives many of the times are actually not true, even if it's popular. True. Praise God. So Hallelujah. that's what we want to deal on this morning. Amen. So um, I remember uh, many years ago, or like what we have here in, um, in the U.S., in the developed world, when you want to buy a car, you want to get a car, you usually get a brand new car. It's very common. Everybody has a brand new car or something brand new. 
you know, but where we come from in Nigeria, you know, even if you're a big boy, you probably will have to start with a Tokumbo car, a state second car. Yeah. Or what do you call it here? It's a, a car that has been used. Yes, before. a used car, you know. So where we come from, we usually start with a used car. Amen. Amen. So, um, but when I got married 10 years ago, I actually started with a car that had been used and used and used and used before it came to my hand. You know, so that's what I started life with. And of course, a lot of my friends actually started life like that. So um, I so then changed the car, changed the car. Then, of course, my level started changing. My financial level started changing. Then I was able to get a very good car this time. So one day, my brother came from Europe. He came to visit me in church. And he requested that some things in the church be put in my car. So I told my guys, I said, can you guys get into the car and take the keys so that you guys can open the car and all? He said, why do, you have, why do they have to take the keys to the car? I said, because they need to open the boot. He said, no, you just need to press the remote and the boot will open. I said, really? Then he took it and he pressed it and the boot opened and he took it. I said, are you serious? I said, you know, I've been driving this car for, for eight months and I don't know how to operate this car. And you know what he told me? He said, because you don't know that cars come to a manual. manual yeah. I said, manual, car. <laughs> we are not used to that where we came from. So he came to my car, opened the pigeon door, and gave me the manual. I said, car comes with manual. The problem is that you don't read the manual. True, true. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us from where we come from as well, so you are buying any electronics and all, it's usually plug and play. Mm -hmm. and we, you, the reason why you don't know a lot, for example, I got to know something about my... Uh, iPhone 40 Pro Max, as expensive as it is, many of us just use it for phone calls, and there are a lot yeah. about it. You don't search to know the truth about what has been given to you. True, true. And so also is marriage and relationship. Yeah. You know, a lot of us, God has given us the manual, which is the Bible, which mm -hmm. is the Word of mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. and He has given us strict instruction yeah, as for how to govern our lives, mm -hmm. how to govern our relationship and marriage. Mm -hmm. But then we abandon it for common truth mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. But sure. God is calling us back to the scripture. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Like I said yesterday, I said Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. forever. It's not going to change. Mm -hmm. Modernity can come. Cultures can change. Yeah. But the truth cannot change. True. True. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and, and forever. forever. True. No matter how popular a lie is, it can never be the truth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to be talking about, we're going to be addressing some popular lies everywhere mm -hmm. that we have now started accepting mm -hmm. as truth. Yes. And we pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one, sex keeps a man. Sex keeps a man. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so this sex we're talking about is premarital, extramarital sex, and even sex inside marriage, but we're dwelling on premarital sex and extramarital, what we call fornication and adultery. adultery. Sex keeps a man. So we, we are counselors, you know, and certified, <laughs> <laughs> and certified counselors. And we have seen a lot of singles and even married people who come to meet us for counsel and there's a particular case, in fact, many cases, but I'll just talk about one of these. You know, she, um, she came to meet me and said, the, the, the guy she's going to get married to said they must test before they get married because she wants, he wants to know whether she can perform. Yeah, whether she's somebody that can, you know, they, they can perform. And I told her, I said, you're not a specimen in the laboratory, so you don't need to test. The real testimony in marriage is when you do it in marriage. Yeah. So you don't test. You don't test, you know. And it's scriptural because many times, you know, a lot of people begin to ask questions. They keep the marriage bed undefiled. You know, it is very scriptural. So that's what we're talking about this morning. It is not, it is not, it's, we're not talking about being ideal. It is wrong. It is scripturally wrong for you to want to test before you marry. And... You know, I, I, um, we have seen it many times, experienced that sex does not keep any man. It will never keep any man. I mean, for those who are married, people who are, people who are men who are unfaithful or women who are unfaithful, if you clack, if you, if you, if you check their marriages, you see that 
it's not like they were lacking sex. I, I mean, I have friends, mm. you know, they were having regular sex, but the man was cheating. Mm. They were having regular sex, the woman was cheating. So it's not really, so sex does not keep, does not make a man faithful or a woman faithful. Mm. Yes, yeah, sex is very important in marriage. I mean, it's, it creates bond, it creates intimacy, a percentage of intimacy, but it doesn't keep anybody. Mm. It's God that keeps a man. You cannot, you cannot use, you cannot, you cannot use flesh to keep something that was created by an higher authority. Yeah. You cannot use sex to, to, to keep something that was created. So you cannot keep se use sex to keep a, a man that was created by God. It mm. has to be God to keep someone that was created by him. True. So you cannot, it's not possible. So a lot of people have gone with these lies and you know before you know it you see yourself getting pregnant committing Going you know from one man, from one man to, to other, another from one lady to another because you are looking for a performer mm. marriage is not a ground that you perform yeah that's the truth marriage is not a ground that you perform so you is marriage is not a union of two performers it's a union of two partners who have an understanding that is rooted in Christ, knowing that, you know, the person who authored marriage is God mm. and it does not change. Mm. It is still God. So what does that mean? That if God authored marriage, it means that there are principles that are laid out aside in scriptures that we must definitely follow. Yeah. So sex does not keep a man. No matter the rounds of sex you give to a man, the rounds of sex doesn't make rounds of faithfulness. Mm. So a man who is unfaithful, or a, this is not just for a man. Ma, I'm talking, when I use the word man, I'm talking about male, male and female. female. Because there are women who are unfaithful in marriage. Yeah. So it doesn't keep. Is it, is it possible to be tempted? Oh, yes. That my husband saved me as the most beautiful girl in his phone, as his contact, most beautiful girl ever. ever. Does not mean that he has not seen people who are more, more mm. beautiful than me. Mm -hmm. I'll be deceiving myself if I, if I tell myself that my husband does have not seen beautiful ladies. You are truthful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've not seen handsome guys. I will be lying. That's the truth. So, does he get tempted? You get tempted. Of course. Of course, you hear. So, let's not be that I'm just talking. He gets tempted. But a you man... Get tempted. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Please just say more no. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see that all men can be tempted, but no, no, not all men commit adultery. True. It's possible to be tempted. Mm. Ladies can be tempted, but not all ladies fornicate. Mm. Not all men fornicate. Mm. Not all men. So, you can, so, you know, that you are married doesn't mean attraction stops in marriage. True. Attraction doesn't stop. It, get married doesn't mean that attraction stops. I, we understand that mm. perfectly. Mm. But that doesn't mean that for the fact that attraction doesn't stop, does not mean that if you're attracted to someone, you shouldn't put boundaries. boundaries. Because, you see, we are actors. We, are, we, we do drama. We do film a mm. lot. When my director, my husband can be a director, producer, and all of that, when he writes a script, or my, the, the person who writes scripts, writes scripts, and I do not play out my role very effectively in the script that has been given to me, I will abuse the role of my director. True. I will frustrate the role. Of, so a lot of us, when we don't leave out what has been stated in scripture, we make God a liar. True. We make God, we, 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 are, we frustrate the role of God in our lives. We don't give, create a space where God comes in to direct our every step. So it doesn't matter what people do around you. I mean, I, 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 I was surrounded with people in my, in my office then who saw primary. I mean, it's, primary sex was a deal. Mm. If they don't have sex, that's it. No marriage. So it was really difficult for me. It looked like every guy that came around me, the guys would have to leave because what they needed was sex. It was the order. And I said, if I have to be rigid... And, and many of them are Christians. Many of them are people who come to church. And that's when I realized that going to church does not equate spirituality. spirituality. It doesn't matter how regular you are in church. Attendance in church is not the same as spirituality. That's true. So they were, I met these guys in church. All they wanted from me was sex. I mean, they'll say, let's do this thing. What's there? So there's even one that told me that God has already revealed that we are married. So we're already married in heaven. Mm. 
Oh, yes. So, you, you see, you see, these are the kind of things that if you are not, if you are not soaked in scriptures, mm. if you are not grounded in scriptures, you will see all of these things come into play. Mm. You know, you know, when you are not grounded in something, everybody will present their own to you. Mm. And you can easily, you won't know when you compromise. True. They told me, they said, was dead. They were, I mean, I remember the Pata Patla guy even insulted me. He told me, look at you, be there, you'll be old there. That's the truth. So, so, and if I wasn't soaked, I would have been contemplating because after I, I saw that kind of guy that came to me with his revelation that we're already married in heaven, I didn't meet any other guy after that. So, if I wasn't grounded in scriptures, I would have been saying, God, have you abandoned me? <laughs> Or should I go that way? Because that's what happens. You know, you, you see ladies, you see some guys, it's not because they wanted to just fall for it, but they were not grounded in their standard enough that made them very different. True. So sex does not keep any So in Psalms 1 to 1 verse 5, Psalms 1 to 1 verse 5, it said, the Lord is it's your keeper. keeper. Mm -hmm. The Lord is your shade at your, at right, your hand. right hand. True. Let's check that again. Media, can help us with that scripture. Psalm 121 verse 5. He said, the Lord is your keeper. keeper. So even if you pack your bags and decide to go and stay in the guy's house, mm -hmm. and he's very married to you, you want to cohabit and stay in the guy's house, scripture is saying that you can't keep the man. True. You realize that you've been so close to the guy and you now stay in the guy's house for, for so long and still not married to mm -hmm. you. You know why? Because the Lord is your keeper. You can't keep a man. man. Mm -hmm. This LLT said the Lord himself watches over you. He's the one that is the determining factor. True. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Number two. Number two. If your spouse really loves you, they will know what you want and need. Mm. <laughs> if your spouse really loves you, they will know what you want and need. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened See unto you. you. Hallelujah. Amen. So when I got married, this was like part of the challenges we were facing. Hallelujah. Yeah. So my wife wakes up in the morning. She takes care of the child, my, our baby. She cleans the kitchen. She cooks. She does a lot of things at once. And me, I'm on my laptop and I'm walking. Then at night, she had walked all day. Then at night, I'm ready for action. And I go and tap her. Amen. So when I tap her, I say, leave me alone. I fling his hand, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so like, why, 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 why are you reacting? How fun. Why are you reacting? He said, you did not help me all through. You know, you were not there for me. Do you really love me? I was like, I don't understand. You know, I would try to light up, but I tried my best. I'm walking through and all those stuff. He said, that's not enough. I'm, up, I'm dying, I'm dying. I really did not understand why she said she was dying. So we now went to go and meet our marriage counselor. And that was when she now opened up and she was like, you really don't assist me. So that was when I told her, I said, or oh, we now agreed on the fact that if you really need me to assist you, you need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Tell me that you need help. A lot of us don't talk about it in our marriages. So we can be dying, we need help, and we are not communicating. True. So your spouse, if, if your spouse really loves you, <laughs> they will know. Your spouse are not magicians. I used to tell my wife, I said, I'm not a miracle worker. I can't tell everything. She would tell me, she's like, sweet, don't you think I need to change my hair now? You have not thought of it. I said, babe, how will I know that? How will, how will I know that you people change hair? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> how will I know? How will I know that hair expires? <laughs> we don't know all those things. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so then I'm talking like that, and it's like, you are sarcastic. I said, this is reality. <laughs> we are not used to these things. If you are not communicating to me and you are not telling me, I can't know. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, this is it's true, actually, because <laughs> even, even God needs you to ask. Yeah. That's it. That's why it's scriptural. It says, ask and it will be given to you. There are no good marriages that grow on assumption. It only grows on communication. True. There is no good marriage that ever grows on assumption. 
It only grows on communication. Communication grows companionship, not assumption. Mm -hmm. So don't ever assume that he knows, even though I feel he should know. Babe, Kai, sometimes I'm like, are you not seeing with your eyes that there's so, there's so much to do and you're supposed to be involved? But I realized from my marriage counselor that, see, he may know, but he needs you to ask him or he needs you to tell him what to do. So, you know, instead of me, you know, wearing a straight face, getting angry or necessary, I get to ask him. Like this one, I told him, help me iron. And he was like, ha, ah, ha. Ah. I'm like, you have to iron for me. I don't know how to iron. <laughs> uh -huh. So, that kind of thing. And he, he, he asked. So, 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 that's the thing. So, if I didn't ask him, he won't. He, will, he may know, but he needs you to ask him. That, that, you know, that brings the kind of responsibility for him to do, you know. So it's very important that you ask him. Even God knows. He knows all things. He knows that we are in need, but he needs you to ask him. And that's why when you come to him praying, what happens? It naturally brings a bond. It creates intimacy, even between you and God. The same thing in marriage. So if I do not communicate how I feel, he would not respond to how I feel. True. The same thing also with your singlehood. If you don't ask questions, you just believe that, oh, I met this person in church. This person should be this. This person should be that. And you don't ask certain questions. You will go into marriage full of surprises. Yeah. That's the truth. It doesn't just end in observation. You have to ask questions. We talked about it yesterday. I don't know if it's yesterday. But we mentioned that if you need to invest in your emotions, you need to investigate. Yeah. And if you have to investigate, it comes with your mouth. Like, you need to open your mouth and ask questions. Don't just ask random questions. Ask necessary questions that will determine a healthy relationship or a healthy marriage. Yeah. A lot of people, when we counsel people, we find out that too many, too many people went into marriage never really asking important questions. Mm. What church do you attend? What church are you going to be attending? How many children do we agree that we should give birth to? Mm. Questions. You know, what number of kids should we have? Yeah. Do you believe, do you have the mindset that it should be only male or it should be only female? Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. You know, are you someone that breaks TV when we, when we have misunderstanding? Yeah. Are you mommy's boy? Are you mommy's boy? Mm -hmm. Does mommy have to decide everything in our marriage? Yeah. Praise God. How do we manage our finance? Yeah. Are you somebody that if your father gave birth to five kids, you want to extend your the legacy by giving birth to ten? Yeah. Do you, you know, want so different children mindset, do you, or do you yes. want cats? Do you want children or do you want cats? Yes. Mm. You know, how do you see finance? Mm. Am I to run the finance of the home? How do we, I want to have joint accounts or don't have joint? So these are questions you must ask because everything that happens in marriage is actually not surprising. It's surprising to you because you, you enter there with assumption. Mm. The same thing in marriage, too, just like we had mentioned. My husband should not really know what I really need, and I do not know what I need, even for gifts. Sometimes, my husband will say, don't surprise me with gifts. I'm not good mm. with buying gifts. I've failed many times. <laughs> so, he tells me, don't surprise me. Ask. Ask me what, Ask me what want I want. Don't give me a surprise Don't give party. me a surprise party. No, you can't surprise my husband. No, no, mm. no. I've tried it. It didn't work. Mm. If you if surprise him, in surprise party, you'll be squeezing his face. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, who sent me? So, so communication so, is key. Key, yes. So many a times, if our spouse, they are not talking, and when we really feel that things are going well, mm -hmm. once in a while we should ask, are you good? Are we going well? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us just assume that things is, we, we're all right. Things are yeah, good. True, true. That's not Amen. So once in a while, just ask. Many times, take your spouse out, mm -hmm. you know, just sit somewhere and ask, are, are, we, are we good? We really have not talked. We can be so busy and we don't really talk about us. Yes, true, true. Amen? True. true. I, I remember when I just got married, my daughter just started school. And my wife said, um, my wife came to meet me and said, um, you know what? You are going to be the one taking our daughter to school. School run. School You'll run. be the one doing it. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I told her, I said, I can't do that. You know, I pray at night. You know, then I wake up around four. No, sorry. I pray at night. Then around four. I sit on my laptop to do my work and everything. Then I usually sleep around 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Then, how will I take the child to school? He said, please now, you know this child. I said, sweet, you have to be doing it. He said, okay. And when the woman said, okay. You know, okay is different from okay. <laughs> <laughs> Women have three types of okay. There's no, okay. I <laughs> there's okay. <laughs> then there's the real okay. 
Amen. Our, our mouth and body doesn't sink many of the times. <laughs> so this okay was okay. So I left it like that. I just then I didn't know types of okay. <laughs> Amen. So my wife started doing the school run. She takes um, then she couldn't even drive. So yeah. the car was in the house and she goes for school run. So she goes, she comes back, she goes, she comes back, then she goes, she comes back. I say, ah, I say, ah, you are getting, your, your journey is becoming so fast. What's happening? I say, ah, that when she came out of the gate, she was standing along the road, that there was this guy. The guy drove past, stopped, picked her, and took her to, to drop the kids and brought her back and everything. I said, okay. She came again so fast, the, this same guy <laughs> took her, brought her back, <laughs> you know? She came back again, she's smiling, she's enjoying the school run now. I said, what's up? He said, this same guy took her, brought her back, and she's good. I said, okay. The next morning, I dress up, <laughs> took my car keys, <laughs> started the car. I'm telling you, from that time till now, I've not stopped school run. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Wisdom is the principal thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So when you do not communicate and you just, you just um, assume that the love is there, mm -hmm. we're all good, you can lose out on your spouse. Yeah. That's what we are saying. So you don't just assume that we are good. True. You know, we must always communicate. True. We, are, we are two different individuals. Yeah. We have two different socialization processes. Yeah, true. And now we're brought up. Now we came together in marriage, so it's expedient that once in a while, we review ourselves yeah. and we talk about ourselves. Very important. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three. three. Who you are is who you attract. Who you are is who you attract. So many times you feel like, oh, because I fear God, I'm Christian. So the people around me that should be attracted to me should be Christians. It doesn't work that way. Mm. Who doesn't like good things? So... Whoever you are attracts both the good, the bad, and the ugly. True. But who you are is who you entertain. Yeah. So it goes beyond attraction. Mm. So while many persons can be attracted to you, you are the one who chooses your entertainment. Mm. The kind of friends that should stay with you. The kind of partner that you will need. I mean, when I was getting married, you know, I, I met different kinds of guys, like I said earlier. Different kinds of guys who did not sync with my values. But just because they were attracted to me did not mean that, you know, I had a problem. That's the truth. Because sometimes you can be on that table, you feel like, oh, maybe I have a problem. I don't know why these kind of people are attracted to me. It's because of you. So your, your kind of person, who you are, brings all kinds of people to you. People who are not spirit-filled, people who are spirit-filled, people, wh whatever be their class. It's who you are that attracts different kind of people, but it is who you are, your values that sees out on who you should entertain, yeah. on you should have around you, or who you should stick to, or who you should follow, or who you should hang out with. But I want you to just understand that, you know, your kind of person, or who you have, your value, your lifestyle, we definitely bring different kinds of people yeah. around your way. I mean, people who are deceivers. Mm. people who, who, you who, don't, lie. who lie, you know, different kinds of people, you know. So don't fall at the kind of people that are coming to you like, oh, my God, I don't understand. Has God left me or, and all or, that? Or, or maybe you ask questions like, yes. Pastor, I don't understand what's wrong what with wrong, me. What's wrong with me? You know, Do I have I'm a problem? Mm -hmm. church, church. And the guys that usually come mm -hmm. around me are very bad guys. Yes. You know, when will I find that particular one mm -hmm. for me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. I usually tell people that before God gave Adam, Adam Eve, yes. animals showed forth. Mm -hmm. You know, it was animals that he entertained. First. Yes, true. <laughs> you were attracted to him. <laughs> you know, hallelujah. Yeah. So, but he, uh, sorry, Adam had the will not to choose an animal. Yeah, true. You know, so he waited and stayed in the place of rest for God to give him the his best. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So what you do is that when animals come, you know, animals can come, maybe a... Dog-like attitude. A dog. Like attitude. Dog-like attitude. A snake-like -like attitude. Like attitude. <laughs> a lion-like attitude. They all come around and everything. That doesn't mean something is wrong with you. True. You know, 
is for you to stand your ground and say, see, I'm waiting on God. Yeah. So when Adam realized that every, everything that came around him, they were animals, he went back to God. Mm -hmm. He never saw that he had a problem. He went back to God, mm -hmm. who is the creator. True, true. And he cried to God. And what did God do? God put him to sleep. sleep. Mm. You know, so sleep is in a state of rest. rest. So when you now tell yourself that, my time is going. Mm. I'm almost 40. I'm almost 30. You know, I don't know. I'm not married and everything. You are trying to complain and tell God that you made a mistake. Mm. But God is saying that, can you just be in a state of rest mm. so that I can walk on you and give you your heave? Mm. Praise the name of the Lord. So you must come to that point where you put your life in a state of rest. True. Where your life is in God's hands. True. So that I can give you your Eve. So there's nothing wrong with you. Mm. Before I met my Eve, I met a lot of people. Mm. Before my wife met me, she met a, a lot, lot of, of people. people yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Many of us who are married as well. So before we met the person we got married to, we met a lot of people. Yeah. So you are not different. True. Meeting all manner of people, you are not different. True. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the, fun, the, the beautiful thing about Adam is that he could identify the different animals. Yeah. Yeah. Many times you can see different people come to you and you don't separate them from who you are. Yeah. He could name them and know that these ones are not his type. Yeah. It's very important. And that's where sense of perception comes into play. You know, where you can perceive beyond who is being attracted to you and know that, see, listen, these ones, I can name them and know that they are not my kind. So Adam knew, Adam knew that so, these ones were So what his. number are we now? Number three. Okay, so number four now, right? Yes. Yeah, you need a man or a woman to, to complete, complete you. you. You need a you man or a woman to, to complete, complete you. you. So we've seen a lot of people who suffer from this um, problem, you know, even in marriage as well, too. If a man or a woman doesn't, if a man doesn't tell you you're beautiful, you don't believe you're beautiful. Mm. So the man used to tell you that, oh, wow, you're, you're so beautiful. I say, really? So you really don't know that you're beautiful, mm -hmm. you know? So you need a man to, to complete you, to make you happy, and all mm. those stuff. Many of us suffer from this um, problem a lot. Why? Because we've really not accepted ourselves. Mm -hmm. Some of us are complaining we are, we are because we are too fat, we feel that there's something wrong with you, or you are too slim, something's wrong with you, you are too short, something's wrong with you. You're too dark. You are too dark, something's wrong with you. The truth is that if you don't accept yourself, nobody can accept you for who you are. Mm -hmm. If you don't love yourself, nobody can love you for who you are. I had to start loving myself and start liking myself because when I was growing up, I really did not like myself. Somebody said, ah, but I like you. But I didn't like myself. When I was growing up, I came to realize that I, my mom gave me tribal marks. Oh, God. I'll go to the mirror and I'll look at myself. i like, God, I hate this. I made my mom. What's in the, so I, I did not know. It was your grandmother. One day you were sick. Your grandmother said that the cure was tribal mark. And they gave tribal mark. I said, do you realize now that you have, you have, you have, you have spoiled my face? Your, your small handsomeness. <laughs> Do you realize that you have spoiled my face? Eh? Will I ever get somebody that is going to marry me, that will love me? If they look at me and they say, ah, ah this guy has tribal man, can I ever get a good wife? It was something I was dealing with. I grew up dealing with it. I, I mean, I, I went to school, went to college. I, um, I felt that I was not accepted. I felt I was not loved just because of this. Hmm. A lot of us are dealing with a lot of things. Sure. And guess what? When I was still small, the, the devil will tell me, say, he would tell me things like, ah, you can never be on TV. Look at the guys that are on TV. They are very fine guys and everything. They don't have tribal mark. So I try to watch people on TV and everything. No one has tribal mark. I say, you can never be on TV. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So I came to realize that the devil actually has a sense of where you are going to. I'm I telling you, here. And it's going to use that thing you are accepting as weakness to discourage you from where you are going yeah, to. True. Imagine if I have accepted it, I will not be on TV today. It's true. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I have won international awards because of movies. Mm -hmm. The first time I came to the U.S. three years ago, it was Florida. I was invited for an award for my movie. And yet, I was struggling with acceptance. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you must learn to accept yourself. Otherwise, people will not accept you. Sure. Look at my beautiful wife, for God's sake. That married me. And yet, I wasn't accepting myself. Sure. 
with my tribal mark. <laughs> Listen now, the Bible says you are fearfully and, and wonderfully, wonderfully made. made. Scripture said also in Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, it says you are complete in him. So you, you can imagine, you are complete in him. So you're not a half or incomplete person going into marriage. Mm. Even in marriage, you're not incomplete. Before your parents, the, the amazing thing about God is that even before your parents ever thought of getting married, they thought of giving birth to you. God had already completed you. Yeah. It was not even the naming ceremony that completed you. Mm. You were already complete in him. Do you know how powerful that is? And the funny thing was, God had to make a conference meeting to make you. Mm. You are formed in his image and likeness. That is your blackness, your fairness, your size was already formed in his image and likeness. So in other words, you are not going to choose someone incomplete. You are mm. not incompletely choosing a partner or staying with a partner. Yeah. You're already complete. So the marriage is not the union of two half people. It's the union of two whole people. Mm. And you don't go into marriage thinking of marriage. Um, sorry. Marriage doesn't make you happy. It's two happy people entering into marriage. Marriage is an open space. So when people say, oh, I want to get married because I want marriage to make me happy. I've been married for 10 years. I am happy by myself because I decide to be happy with God, Amen. by God, and by myself. Amen. So if I'm waiting on my... <laughs> I mean, if I'm waiting on my husband to make me happy, I'm, I'm deceiving myself. Mm. Because my husband is depending on somebody else to make him happy, mm. and which is God. So if I'm depending on him, he doesn't have the capacity to make me happy. Mm. So many people get into marriage with that mindset, and that's frustrated many couples. Yeah. He doesn't make me happy. No. He's not meant to make you happy. You are to depend. I mean, whilst we contribute to our happiness, but we don't have the capacity, but what, but, but husband or wife, to make ourselves happy. So marriage does not make you happy. You need to have the mindset for single people. When you are entering marriage, you are entering marriage with you being happy for yourself. And knowing the God that makes one happy, and you're entering into marriage, both of you are coming together to create happiness in marriage. True. Marriage is an open field. It's what you bring in that grows. Yeah. So you're not going to marriage to, to make marriage. And then marriage is not a cure to loneliness. Yeah. I'm lonely. That's why I chose him. I'm lonely. That's why I chose. I'm lonely. It says, and God said, it is not good that Adam should be alone. There is a difference between alone and loneliness. loneliness. Alone is a state of the physical, the, the, the physical state of singleness. Loneliness is a psychological state. Mm. So in other words, you can be married and lonely. Yeah. There are many lonely married people. Yeah. There are many. So marriage is not a cure for loneliness. It's not even a cure because you're not a disease. Mm. Mm. And marriage is not a hospital. True. For even this. if you're even a doctor. Mm. So marriage is not a cure for loneliness. And marriage does not secure anybody. It doesn't. Marriage does not secure. You go in secured in marriage. Marriage doesn't secure. It doesn't bring respect. You know, like, oh, when I bear the name Mrs., people begin to respect me. It doesn't work that way. There are many people who have children and they're married, they, you, don't have, you still don't have respect. Mm -hmm. You still don't feel relevant. Mm. Marriage, yes, it, it adds to your status. It changes your status from single and married. But to be real, if you're not relevant for yourself, you don't identify your purpose in God, you're not relevant. You're going to marry feeling irrelevant. I have been there. I got married, the early years of my marriage. I married a pastor. And then everybody's like, Pastor, Pastor Oiz, Pastor Oiz. I felt left that side. Church, oh yeah. my God. Like, you know, and some ladies say, mm. like, oh, Pastor, the message you preached today was, wow. They were even passed the wife. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> so, and then my husband was really busy attending to, you know, different people, meeting people. And I'm, I just felt like, I just felt aside. And I knew that 
I needed to work on me to be relevant. Mm. I needed to work on me to earn respect. I knew that the field called marriage wasn't going to build respect for me True. because I changed status. True. It doesn't work that way. So I had to work on myself. I had to grow me. I was very intentional about it. So I was like, oh, Pastor, oh, wow, are you hungry? I'm like, does he not have wife? <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So these are the things. So marriage doesn't secure anyone. If you are insecure, marriage will expose your insecurity more. True. So where you have deficiencies, you work on yourself, not deciding to get married or frustrating a spouse because you are insecure. Mm. Your spouse doesn't have the treatment for insecurity. Yeah. So you need to intentionally work on it. It's very important. Praise Amen. God. So you must understand that you are complete, complete in, in Jesus. Him. Yes. You are complete in Once in a while, look at the mirror and tell yes. yourself, I am complete in him. Yes. I am perfect in him. Or maybe a guy tells you, oh, your head is too big, your head is too small. You know, no, take yourself out. Get cake, eat, just celebrate yourself. Yeah. You know, don't wait for people to celebrate you on your birthday. Don't go to church, start checking people's status, start checking who is posting you, who is not posting you on your birthday, and start having enemies. You know, it doesn't call for that. <laughs> Some of us, we do all those petty things. It's just that you have not accepted yourself. True. If you truly accept and you love yourself, mm. you don't need anybody to compliment you. True, true. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? You don't need anybody. I've seen a lot of petty people, even petty men. You didn't celebrate me on my birthday. You didn't post me. <laughs> Now, uh, is this, that's, not, that's not a big deal. I don't need your celebration. I don't need you to post me. <laughs> Amen. For me to be happy, I'm happy for myself. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you must get the joy for yourself. You know, uh, he didn't tell me he loves me. He didn't tell me he loves me. My wife usually comes to me and says, sweet, am I beautiful? Mm -hmm. And whether it's because I'm an Edo man or something, we are very... <laughs> Like she said before, she wanted to marry a smooth stalker. You know those kind of guy. Oh, you're, you're beautiful. You're your beautiful. Your there was one of those, those poem, composed poem for you. And now she asked me, are you, are you beautiful? I said, ah, ah, sweet now. Ah, this is your makeup. Oh, remove it. See, this is your... <laughs> she was like, but everybody, they were telling me that they are beautiful. I said, that is everybody. I am your husband. It's only your husband that can tell you the truth. You are not fine. <laughs> so... Early stage of our marriage, I started working on my mouth. <laughs> how to talk well. Not that, how, uh, I, I don't know how to put it. Maybe some of us here, so we now started lying. Because certain times, ladies make us say certain things that are not real. Let's just say we are lying. <laughs> you know, just to make them happy, we just say certain things like that. So I started learning it. Amen. Then my wife, on her own part, she started learning how to accept herself for who she is. So she doesn't need my compliment to be beautiful. Yeah. So she goes to the mirror and she tells herself, man, I'm beautiful. Yeah. So even when I come, I say, sweet, you are so beautiful. She says, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I, don't, I, don't, I know I'm beautiful for myself. So you must come to that point. Not that, hey, you are beautiful. Really? So I'm beautiful. Oh, God. It's a lie. Oh, it's a lie. <laughs> no, you have to be beautiful for yourself. Amen. That's the only way you can breathe and live happy. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate Jesus for that? <laughs> Number what now? Five. You don't need God to make a marriage successful. A lot of people believe that we don't need God to make marriage successful successful. So, a lot of us, we've, we usually hear Christians say, um, uh, my father, he got married, his marriage lasted 50 years, and he did not know God. You know, what are you now telling me? Have you had such statements? We have such mentality that look at that guy, look at what he's doing, he's not living by godly standards. You know, yet, is successful. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot live outside the one who wrote the manual for marriage. True. And listen, that people stayed in marriage for 50 years or 40 years 
does not mean that they were happy in the marriage. True. It's not in the duration of the marriage. It's how happy they were in the relationship. True. Many of our fathers I use as an example, it was based on boss and the servant relationship. True. They truly did not know what love is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know, so the wives couldn't talk. The wives couldn't say it was what the man said they did. That was in marriage. So we can't use that as an example. Scripture tells us what marriage is. In Psalms 1 to 7, verse 1, the Bible says, Unless the Lord builds a house, unless the Lord builds a house, the laborers, they labor in vain. Mm -hmm. If God is not in the picture of your marriage, you are laboring but in vain. Hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So whether you are about to get into marriage or you are married already, the truth is that you need to make Jesus the foundation of your marriage. A lot of us usually forget that when we came to the altar to, to, to take the marriage vow, we thought it was just two of us that took the marriage vow. We never knew that there was a third person and that third person was Jesus Christ. True. Hmm. It was a part of our marriage. So, we should always acknowledge him. Not run it to your friends to complain. If you see what my husband did, de -de 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 and before you know, the friend will now call the husband. I say, useless man, what are you doing to my friend? De -de 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 no! The friend was not part of the people that did. It was you and Jesus. 30 times go on your knees and cry to God concerning your spouse. Sure. Am I talking to somebody? So you need God to make marriage work. If we do not want to live our life the way the Western world they are living in, now that marriage is now contract, mm. marriage is now business. People celebrate the wedding and never celebrate the marriage. People get into marriage already planning that they are going to divorce. Mm. We all that. People, I mean, we'll, we'll do counseling, planning, getting married to this guy, and the lady is already telling me that you say, yeah, if the guy just doing it, I will leave. So why are you marrying in the first place? Hmm. When you, have, you already have a plan to My leave. Mind. The reason why people have those agenda is because they never made Christ the center, the center of their union. Hmm. You want to make your marriage work? Jesus must be the center of the union. Hmm. We have had, we, we have had, we, we have had so many challenges. Mm -hmm. We have seen Jesus show up for us in our marriage. Mm -hmm. When we got married, we went to the redemption camp. We went to go and make a vow. We went to Daddy Gio's house, took our seed that he prayed us for our marriage. I went to go and drop it in Daddy Gio's house. So myself and my wife, we prayed. Then from there, we left, um, we left Daddy Gio's house and went to the main auditorium. So we went to go and fellowship. From there, chorus started. Amen. Our chorus started in only moon. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Started quarreling. So. So we needed to take picture as at that time. So I was telling my wife, I'll be pinching at that time. She says, smile, I want him to smile, smile, smile. She's angry. I was like, God, what kind of, who, who, who sent me this one that I should go and marry? <laughs> Amen. What kind of a package is this one? That it is on our honeymoon that we are quarreling already. And we got into marriage like that and we started having several issues. You know, if I tell my wife that this chair is red, she'll say it's black. I said, sweet, open your eyes. This chair is red. Look at it, red. Take glasses, wear. It's red. See, it's black. I mean, that was our problem. We're having issues. If I say, let's go this direction, say she wants to go to this direction, start having a lot of challenges and all those stuff. Even counseling could not work. You know, so what I did was that I started switching to prayer. So, in the place of praying for my spouse, praying for my spouse, praying for my wife, the more I began to pray, the more we're getting attacks. We're getting attacks. When we started the windows, we started windows six months into our marriage. The first time we shot the first kids, that was 10 years ago, that same week, robbers came and robbed all our equipment. All! We needed to start again. So I borrowed money capital to start again. And we started again, we started producing skit, producing people are not watching, just two views, one view, two views, one views on YouTube, people are not watching, we just, we're just consistent because God said that we did it for a year plus with all the problems I was getting my marriage, challenges and all those stuff, robbers came again this time, they came inside our house this time with guns and all, put guns on our head and they cleared all our equipment again. This time we're in perpetual 
get. I remember that Sunday I couldn't preach, so I got a pastor to come and preach for us, an elderly man. So while he was preaching, I sat at the front, myself and my wife, and the man was preaching, and the sermon was about me, and he was preaching. He said, when the devil wants to attack a man, it's because there is a sin he has committed. A sin. He said, check your heart. Maybe you are a pastor. Look at me and tell you, maybe you are a pastor. You are sleeping with members. Why will God not rob you? Maybe you are eating tight and offering. He was talking. Adversity will be before you. You need, <laughs> you need to repent of your sin. I sat there at the front with my wife. Tears started welling up my eyes. I said, God, what did I do? I served you faithfully as a single man. I got married and this whole problem, I don't understand. I was there, I was crying. He thought that I was crying because of his sermon. <laughs> and that my sin has found me out. <laughs> he didn't know that I was crying. I was telling God, God, we went to redemption camp and we made a covenant. The covenant was so strong. We told ourselves, we are not going to have sex in any hotel. It will be a redemption camp. The only of holies. I'm telling you, we made strong covenants and prophecies came on that day that your marriage will be a role model. And now, from one calamity to the other, as we're trying to leave that world, my wife became pregnant for our second child. Laboring for the kingdom, I was traveling out for the first time to Syria alone on a mission. And while I was getting ready to go, we quarreled again as usual. So she said she was not going to talk to me. So I said, okay, okay, all right. Then I told my peer, I said, please take care of her and everything, everything on stop. I went to Lagos, about to fly out, no stop. So that night I called her, how are you doing? Fine. I said, everything, fine. Da, 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 fine. I said, all right, no problem. All right, take care. So I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know she was on labor. Around 3 a.m., I called. Hey, babe, babe, how are you doing? It was the doctor that paid. <sighs> We're trying to bring back your wife back to life. The child is dead. The child is dead. <sighs> What is all this? What is all this? I came back to Benin, buried this child, and I went back on missions, doing God's work, and yet calamities everywhere. Listen, my point is this. The devil knows that every Christian home carries a seed. Yeah. And he will do anything in his capacity because he knows you are a voice and you have the capacity to change a generation. And certain things, it might not be about you. It may be about the seeds that you're about to bring forth. True. And it will do anything in its capacity to make sure he silence that voice. Mm. Listen now. When you find your spouse cheating or one issue or the other, I'm not supporting that. But see, before you start calling the side chick, I say, your father, your mother, your this one. Listen, there's a battle already. Mm. Use your physical method, but also Use don't spiritual. forget the spiritual means. Because you have to call that man out in the realm of the spirit. You have to call that woman out in the realm of the spirit. It is laziness that makes people give up on marriage easily. When myself and my wife sit down, we are counseling people. We'll be laughing. They don't know why we're laughing. They are laughing. What is making you both divorce? We have been through it. <laughs> what is making you cry? I don't like the man again. We have been through it. In the process of praying and praying for my wife, not giving up. Never did I want a raised man to slap my wife for 10 years. Never. With all the stubbornness. When God saw. <laughs> There's no cheers. Amen. Amen? <laughs> Amen? Amen? The, the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me and began to reveal to her that the reason why she was dealing with what she was dealing with and that was affecting her marriage was that she actually came from a broken home. She saw her father beat her mom. And the father did not just stop there. The father drove the mom and five girls out of the house and married another woman. So, they lived their life vowing and saying, hey, 
I no will man. never forgive my father. No man can use my head. But despite the fact that she had given her life to Christ, she didn't know that she was battling with that. So we got into marriage excited as believers, as church people. And if I say, sweet, can we taste her? No, 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 no. We didn't know that she was reacting based on where she was coming from. You see why you need prayers. You see why? You, see, there are certain things that don't answer to principles. Three, three ways to make marriage work. It doesn't answer to that. There are certain things that answers to prayer. Mm. Where you need to intercede for your spouse and call the name of God. Even pertaining relationship, there are certain things that don't answer to ice cream or McDonald's. There are certain things that you need to call on God for sure. so that he will show you mercy. Mm. We are going to take our time to pray today. Mm. We are going to be calling those things which be not as though they were. Mm. I do not know the face you are in mm. in your marriage. Mm. I do not know the face you are in in your relationship. Mm. I think today is the right time for us to talk to God. Mm. I know this is a praying church and we need to pray. Can we rise up on our feet? Just begin to pray. Pray for your relationship. You are single. Just begin to pray. Pray for your marriage. Just begin to pray. Can I hear your voice? 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 Can I hear your voice in this place? Can I hear your voice? Can I hear your voice? Can we begin to pray for our relationships? Let's pray for our marriage. Let's pray for our children. That the hands of the enemy will not prevail over their lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That the culture that is prevailing in our society will not corrupt us. That revival will start in our homes. It will start in our lives. Just begin to pray. You are struggling with any habit. This is the time to pray. Oh, Palita Zambratia de Sakanda de Adabradas. Can you take your voice higher? Can you take your voice higher? Lita Yada Bracanda de Adabraca Shata Lesa Yata Bracanta Yada Bracada Lagada Yada Bracada Esho Yata Yada Bracada. If you're not praying in this atmosphere, you are wrong. <laughs> Come on, open your mouth and begin to pray. <laughs> Cry to your maker, Libra Candide. Let's say, Let's say, Let's say, Let's say, Hey, we begin to call those things which be not as though they were. We begin to cry for a revival in our marriages. We begin to cry for deliverance in our homes. We begin to cry for deliverance that the acts of flesh will not prevail. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let me hear you pray. Let me hear you pray. we will not fail our generation. We will not fail our generation. 
There are many persons that are, there are some persons that are dealing with baggages. You are dealing with hearts from your past. This morning, I want you to just surrender all to God. Elenda la baladosa. Elebre calacosha. Elenda la baladosa. Elenda la baladosa. Just begin to surrender those hearts. There's, there are some persons here, some spouses are struggling. You, you, you are not that kind anymore because of the things that have happened in your marriage. Can you just surrender to him and say, Lord, help me, heal me. Oh, Lord, heal me. Can, 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 can you just go before him in humble surrendering and just say, Lord, can you heal me? Some of you are like me that have come from bitter backgrounds. You have come from terrible backgrounds. This morning you want to say, Lord, Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me to love again. Help me, help me to be at peace again. Ala bramba la bossa e le bene dosa. Ana na bala bala dosa e le bene dosa. Ale breke le bele le bala cosa. Ale breke te le cabala dondo su di bala bala dosa. Le breke le bele 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 bele. La braca la bala dosa. La braca pa 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 pa. I de ke de le le bala dosa. Le breke de le ka pa 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 pa. Si na la pa 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 bala dosa le bene dosa. Let break it, let it happen, bala bala dosa. Our marriages will not fail. Our relationships will not fail. I let break bala, our children will not fail. I let break bala bala dosa, let bala dosa. Let break it, pa 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 la bala dosa. Our marriages prosper. They are built on a solid rock, which is God. De 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 let bala dosa. I let break bala dosa, let bala dosa. There are people under the sound of our voice. You want to say, Pastor, I want to rededicate my life to you. I've lived life my own way. I have done life based on my principles. But today, I had an encounter with your word. Or you're under the sound of our voice. You need healing. There are baggages you've been carrying and it's been a burden to you. You need to release it to your maker. You've been struggling all these years. People see you smile, but yet you are hurting inside. And you say today, God, I want to surrender to you. There's this other set of persons under the sound of my voice. You don't know why you are struggling with sexual immorality. You are just struggling. You get up, you rise from it. You don't know. There's this other set of persons under the sound of my voice. You were abused while you were young, and because of that, there was an opening, you know, and you've not been able to forgive your past, and it's been holding you so strong. If you're in any of this category, wherever you are under the sound of our voice, Jesus is waiting for you at the front. Can you please walk to the front so we can pray with you? wherever you are. The rest of us can begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. The presence of God is here. You don't need to be ashamed. Just walk to the altar. We want to hold your hands and pray with you. We want to hold your hands and pray with you. Wherever you are. Where is that brother? Where is that sister? Wherever you are just come to the altar the master wants to heal you the master wants to heal you the master wants to heal you you'll be struggling with us all this while the master wants to heal you Holandi ada bakau, shasi ada brakanda dish. Oh, saya ada brakanda ya dadish. Le do 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 do
Yes, this person under the sound of my voice, you have been struggling with repeated pattern, repeated pattern, repeated pattern. You've been observing this pattern happening repeatedly in your family and it seems it wants to happen in you. Wherever you are, you can come out so we can break that pattern. We want to break that yoke. I hear the Spirit of God says, it ends with you. It ends with you. It ends with you. Let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Leitayada bakao shasi bakandadish. Ezo yoto bakata ibata zeto stali dada. Heza yada bakata yada deista. Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Living God, He's the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost, the scepter of the King of Kings. He's the Your deliverance is now. Congratulations, your deliverance is now. Can we still be praying? Let's just be praying. Let's just be praying. Let's just begin to pray. There is deliverance in the atmosphere. Just begin to pray. There is deliverance in the atmosphere. We are going to pray for everybody today. But I hear in my spirit that God wants to reignite spiritual gifts. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, I saw a lady in this meeting. You've been a strong intercessor. Your prayer life was very strong. But all of a sudden, the cares of this world, you know, challenges and all, that fire is no longer there. 
I use you as a point of contact to reach out to every other person here. We are going to pray and God will ignite this fire again. Amen. Can we all lift up our hands towards everyone? You must take something today. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, reignite this fire. Reignite me afresh. A fresh anointing. To burn for you. To burn for you. To burn for you. Use me to change my family. Use me to change my nation. Use me to change my workplace. May I carry strength, grace. Oh God. May I not be carried away by the cares of this world. I hear my spirit that as you begin to pray, just begin to press in the place of prayer. You know, there's a somewhere here that the Lord is going to put a burden of praying inside your spirit. Oh, Victory Temple, pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. It's a sound of revival. It's a sound of revival. It's a sound of revival. Oh, there is a reigniting taking place right now. Just release yourself in few minutes. Release yourself in few minutes. Release yourself in few minutes. I hear my spirit says there will be no longer these former things that has been so attached to you. Oh, today marks a memorable day in your life. I'm pulling away those old things. I'm pulling away those former things. Behold the new things in front. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Just be silent, everyone. Make sure no distraction. Lift up your hands, everyone. Can you bring the strings a bit higher? Just be silent. No movement. Silence, everyone. Silence in the auditorium. Silence. Just release yourself to the Spirit, to the flow of the Holy Ghost. There is a particular lady here. I hear my spirit a rekindling of your fire. Don't say amen, just be silent. The Holy Ghost will just begin to do his work. It's a rekindling of your fire. You're feeling the heat right now from your belly to your palm. A rekindling of your fire. A rekindling of your fire. Oh, oh. A rekindling of your fire. I, I see right about now the angel of the Lord with a lamp of oil. And his oil is running oil all over you. It is a rekindling of your fire. Take it now. Take it. 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 
It says, you were born, you were born. It says, I give unto you strange utterance. Behold the new things. I have pulled away the former things that you were used to. Behold the new, behold the new. You will speak forth my word and there will be confirmation. Oh, the fire of the Holy Ghost upon this person. is upon this person, it's upon this person. It is a fresh anointing. It is a fresh anointing. It's a fresh oil upon your life. Alabai Melabai, Celebrambo, Zalabai, Lebre Cabambo, Zelain de Liba, Elebrembo, Sunamama Malabosa, Lebre Capa in de Laba. I hear my spirit right now. There is a veil that's been pulled off, and it says it's a change of garments. It says, no more shall you battle in depression. I am God. I am God. I speak my words and I bring it with confirmation. I am God. I am taking away the veil of depression that has held you bound for too long. I am God. I am God. There is a confirmation to this. Oh, 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 oh. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost is so strong in this atmosphere. Can you begin to receive your healing right now? Ooh, 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 salaime, ba, 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 lebre kapambo. I end my spirit for a man right now. He says, you will not struggle in this addiction anymore. I have come to renew your strength. Receive, 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 receive. Victory Temple, receive of the Lord. Receive, receive. I see him dispersing gifts to two people. Two, 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 two. Strange spiritual gifts. Receive, receive, receive. Receive, Victory Temple, receive. Receive this parcel. Receive, 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 receive. He says, I'm calling forth women from their dead altars. And I am blowing my incense again. Women who would war, women who would wage warfare, women who would take up mantles and they will fight. I am God, 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 I am God. Receive, 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 receive. I have come forth strong and I will open doors that have been closed in time past. I am God. I will open doors that have been closed in time past. I am renewing you with joy again. Joy, 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 joy. There is a wind of peace blowing around this particular person. I had joy in the Holy Ghost. I had joy in the Holy Ghost. I had joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Oh, 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 oh. I am bringing you from your little beginnings. I want to increase you without struggle, without struggle. Can't you see? I have ordained you as a priest, a watchman, a watchman at the gates, a watchman, a watchman you are, a watchman you are. And I have enabled you for this. Receive an anointing for speed. It's coming. It's coming. An anointing for increase. I am God. I am God. When I speak, I do. When I speak, I do. Can you tremble at my word? Receive this anointing for speed. Anointing for increase. I like you have struggled at the beginning part of this year, but I have come, I have come to fill you up with my glory. This glory of this present house today shall surpass the former. I am God. Behold, I am God. I did it in the days of Moses. I did it in the days of Elijah. And I am God. I am still God. And I will do it in your time. Forget about what has happened at the beginning of this year. I have come to increase you. 
come to increase you. There is a fuel on your palm right now. There is a fuel. It's burning. It's burning on your palm. It's burning so strong. Receive, 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 receive. Father, we pray for restoration for marriages. We pray for healing in the atmosphere. The Bible says, if any two of us shall agree as touching a thing is established. We pray for speed upon homes today. We decree that you will recover all. The years that the canker worm and the caterpillar has eaten, we decree that you will recover all. There is restoration everywhere. Some of you will leave this place with strange fire. You will burn for God like never before. Your passion for the kingdom will increase like never before. Holy Spirit of the living God. Just begin to worship the name of the Lord. Just begin to thank him for everything he has done. Oh, lift up your hands and begin to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> He has touched everyone in this place. Nobody is exempted. Just begin to thank him. Just begin to thank him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. 